Is Easter biblical or is Easter pagan? Should Christians celebrate Easter? There's Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Church services. Then there's Easter baskets, Easter eggs, Easter bunnies, Easter egg hunts, and much more. Every year these questions come up and cause lots of confusion. Many Christians don't know if by celebrating Easter they are honoring the Lord Jesus Christ or the world or even pagan gods. But it turns out there are three Easter's. There's a Christian Easter, a pagan Easter, and a secular Easter. Same name, same spelling, but completely different Easter's. And not understanding that is really how the confusion happens. So for solid theology, the study of God, and for apologetics, defending the faith, it's important to understand each of the three Easter's. I'm Robert Ash. Welcome to the Thinker's Bible. First, the Christian Easter. What does Easter mean? Where did Easter come from? Why did the dates change every year? And why is it called Easter? The Christian Easter is a Jesus Christ Resurrection Day celebration. For Christians, Easter celebrates the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rising from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. For Christians, Easter is the holiest and most important day of the year, celebrating the purpose and power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ which is salvation and eternal life to all who believe. On Easter, on Resurrection Day, the believer's heart is as excited as the women who saw the angel at Jesus' empty tomb, who heard the angel say in Matthew 28, 6, He is not here. He is risen, as he said. The shock, the amazement, the thrill, it's all there in the believer's heart every Easter, every Resurrection Day knowing that Jesus Christ is alive, knowing that because of his rising from the dead, by putting faith in him as God and Savior, we are forgiven. We're born again. We are saved. And it never gets old. That thrill is always new. And that is the meaning of Easter for the Christian. Now for the history. The earliest recorded celebration of Easter was in the second century in Sardis. Sardis is in Western Turkey. It's located about 55 miles east of Ephesus, uh, and that's where the Ephesians church was. It turns out in Revelation 3.1, while the risen Christ spoke to the seven churches of Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey, he told the church of Sardis, these things has he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, how you have a name that you are alive and are dead. But Jesus also told the church of Sardis in Revelation 3.4, you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And it looks like the church of Sardis listened to the Lord Jesus and got it together. Because in AD 160 to 170, about 80 or 90 years after Jesus warned the church of Sardis, Bishop Melitil of Sardis preached the earliest documented Easter homily or sermon. Regarding Pascha or Easter, Melito wrote, It is old with respect to the law, but everlasting through grace. It is mortal because of burial in the ground, but immortal because of resurrection from the dead. Amen. So thankfully, the Church of Sardis was still around for us to learn this precious early Easter history. It always helps to be obedient to the Lord, but Easter's roots are earlier. Messianic Jews who believe in Jesus Christ as their Messiah trace the holiday even further back. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross on the Jewish Passover. For the earliest Jews, Jesus was God's Passover lamb who was sacrificed, the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the nation Israel. Jesus died at the ninth hour. Jesus died the same hour as the Passover lamb was being killed by the Jewish high priest to atone for the nation's sins. As Matthew 27 records, now from the sixth hour, it was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, laba samachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. He died. That year, the Jews sacrificed their Passover in complete darkness in the middle of the day. While Jesus died on the cross so he could bring us light 
through his resurrection from the dead. Then on that first resurrection day, the third day, according to the scriptures, Jesus rose from the dead. God's Passover lamb rose again. Now on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, when the church was formed during the Jewish feast of first fruits, the Jews who followed Jesus didn't forget what the Passover really meant. Every Passover after the resurrection, they were reminded of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. They celebrated Passover with a completely different understanding than the non-believing Jews. That understanding of Jesus' resurrection was shared with the Gentiles by believing Jews. And another second century bishop, Polycrates of Ephesus, tells us Melito was a believing Jew. The Gentiles in the first century began believing in and worshiping the risen Savior Jesus Christ. They began celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ with their believing Jewish brothers and sisters. The custom of celebrating Easter, or Pascha, was already established when Melito, Bishop of Sardis, preached his Easter homily or sermon. In the description, there's a link to Melito's homily. Please check it out and comment what you think about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So that is how the Christian Easter started. That is its real history. And that is what the Christian Easter is for born-again believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As Jesus told his disciples in Luke 24, 26, Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? And praise be to God for his precious Passover lamb, Jesus, who is the way of salvation for us all, for you and for me. That includes us all who put faith in him. Over time and in different countries and cultures, other elements came into Easter and there are different ways that believers celebrate Easter as a meal or as a feast or a worship service or all of the above. But at its core, Christian Easter has always been about celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and God's gift of salvation to the world through him. Now the date. Where did the date of Easter really come from? And why does it change every year? Well, there's a lot to it. There were church councils, there were uh, Christian Brotherhood, unfortunately some anti-Semitism, there was politics, intrigue, and we'll see all about it in the next video. We'll see about the name and how the name came to be, and then we'll talk about the other two Easter's, the pagan Easter and the secular Easter. So please share this video with your church, with your Bible study, with your social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you're on. I'm Robert Ash. This is the Thinker's Bible, clear answers to hard questions. And please watch these other videos that are geared to help you to grow in your knowledge of the Bible, in your knowledge of Jesus Christ, and in your walk with the Lord.